Morning approaches. The sun rises over the John Day fossil beds in eastern Oregon. This area is known to paleontologists and geologists throughout the world for its remarkably well-preserved plant and animal fossils. Located on the dry eastern side of the Cascade Mountains, the fossil beds hold the puzzle pieces of the past. The John Day fossil beds are unique. Few places in the world preserve such a long sequence of geologic history layer by layer. And in most of these layers, evidence of prehistoric life is abundant. This gives scientists a rare opportunity to trace the richness and variety of life in a fossil record that is millions of years long. One hundred million years ago, the Pacific Ocean pounded a shoreline hundreds of miles east of its present location. The edge of the sea ran to the John Day country. Meeting the shoreline, a fast-moving river carried rocks and sediment into an ocean bay. For millions of years, the sediments accumulated on the ocean floor. When the ocean receded, the rocks that now form Goose Rock were left behind. As the ocean level lowered, the climate remained warm and humid. A jungle grew, and new animals appeared. Among these were titanotheres and little four-toed horses. With the tropical climate came heavy rainfall. The rain, mixed with volcanic soil, created turbulent mudslides which carried whole hillsides of trees, leaves, seeds, and animals with it. When these rushing mud flows ceased and hardened, a jumble of fossils was preserved. This petrified layer of volcanic mud is known as the Clarno Formation. Fifteen million years later, the Young Cascade Mountains began to erupt and build up in the west. Moisture-laden air from the sea was cut off and the climate grew drier and cooler. Hardwood forests and redwood groves replaced the jungle. The 
The Oreodont, once one of the most abundant mammals in North America, often fell prey to the savage saber-toothed cat, one of the forest's major predators. The early Cascade volcanoes erupted violently and frequently during this 20 million year period, spewing ash in deep layers across the countryside and creating conditions favorable to fossilization. When a wounded oreodont stumbled into a creek and died, its bones were covered by ash-laden water. The minerals in the ash gradually filled the cavities in the bones forming a petrified replica of the original skeleton. Most of the fossils at this time are found in the green rock layer of the John Day Formation. The green color developed when the ash accumulated quickly and the lower layers were sealed off from the air. Protected from decay in this airless environment, the bones remained intact long enough to be fossilized. Very few fossils are found in the oldest layer, the red. Here the ash fall was sparse. The oxygen in the air reacted with the iron in the ash to produce the rusty red color. Bones of animals that died in these exposed places would be scattered and destroyed by predators, wind, and rain, making preservation unlikely. After the John Day period, a series of violent lava flows burst from massive cracks in the earth. Floods of hot, glowing basalt covered thousands of square miles, destroying everything in their path. Animals and plants were incinerated. Chances for fossilization were remote. These lava flows erupted for over a million years, forming many layers that sometimes cooled in vertical pillars. Seventeen individual layers of basalt have been counted in the walls of Picture Gorge. Eventually, this volcanic cycle ended. Because of a cooler, drier climate, earlier forests gave way to open, grassy savannas. Animals adapted to the plains, and herds of grazing mammals and their predators flourished. Pony-sized horses, camels, rhinos, and bear dogs. Periodically, like quiet snowfall, ash fell thickly from nearby volcanoes to the east and covered the landscape. Today, erosion has revealed glimpses of this time in the form of white cliffs of fossil-bearing volcanic ash, called the Masco Formation. A period of quiet erosion followed, 
The valley's filled with river-worn sands and gravels. Then, a cataclysm of unimaginable force struck the land. A crack opened in the earth. Out emerged hot, frothy ash which roared across the country at express train speeds. Nothing could outrun this avalanche of death. These hot ash flows form the Rattlesnake Formation, the rim rock you now see for miles along the John Day Valley. With the Rattlesnake Formation, the cycle of land building was completed. Now wind and water would begin to tear down what took nature millions of years to create. As rock and ashy soils are worn away, fossils, many of them superbly preserved, are brought to light. Oreodonts, horses, saber-toothed cats, turtles, leaves, nuts and seeds. Water has also shaped and rounded the soft sediments of the painted hills. Slowly, over the past few million years, the John Day River has carved through a solid plateau of basalt. The steep walls of Picture Gorge are silent testimony to the quiet power of running water. One hundred million years of geologic events have created the John Day country we see today. The volcanoes and eruptions are gone, for now. Gone too are the ancient animals and plants that once abounded. But the earth and its story are a cycle, and a life that ends today may be enshrined for eons to come. <laughs>